On behalf of the Department of Education, Nursery Division, HM, staff, parents, and children of Robson Burnham Nursery, a warm welcome is extended to you on the launching of the 40th anniversary of Nursery Education Program. We have students, parents, educators, stakeholders from across the miles. I say partners in education because really, the education process of a young child is a partnership, is it not? Everyone has to work together for the growth and development of a nation. Isn't that true? So from the foundation all the way to the pinnacle, we work together to build a nation. Isn't that so? That is the charge in education, and that is why we are celebrating today. I say that today is a celebration because we are celebrating several things. In the first instance, we are celebrating the first 1,000 days of a child's life. The first 1,000 days. This is where parents bring children into the world through the biology. We have the social, emotional, cognitive, educational development that we pour into our children when we play with them, when we talk with them, when we hug them. We keep pouring in. For those of you whose math is quite sharp, the first thousand days equals how many years of life? Ten, ten, ten. See people carrying the one, right, and then the zero. It works itself out to about three and a half years. Did you get that answer? More or less, right? Now, these first years of life, these first three and a half to four years, this is where 8 to 5% of brain development happens in all humans. 85%. How much percent is left over for the rest of your life course? Lots of maths today. 15%. So if we were to visualize what that looks like, 85% of who we become is poured into us from our families, from our communities, from our religious institutions, and from our schools in those first few years. So can we agree that the first years of the life are the most critical? Do you agree? Yes. See some of you going, hmm, maybe. Everything that we are is predicated upon what we do now in the first few years of life. So as we continue to celebrate today, we celebrate those first thousand years because we are celebrating parents and communities' contribution to the development of a nation. We also celebrate today the instinct and heart of a community to develop young children. This is a bow and a nod to all of those bottom house daycares, those creches, all of those civic-minded churches and individuals who decided to put heart into the care and development of the youth of the nation. They weren't necessarily organized as we see it here today in 40 years, but it was a beautiful start to something that we now can celebrate 40 years of in an organized capacity. Isn't that so? Isn't that wonderful? Today is also a day of celebration for higher learning, meeting purpose. Now, higher learning has been reflected in the growth of the early childhood development sector at CPCE. It's now a focus at the college, at the university level. We have specializations in early childhood education, in nursery education. There are now advanced studies that you can do. So today is also a celebration in Guyana of higher learning, meeting that instinctive passion and purpose. Forty years, wow. It's also a celebration of a heightened consciousness of a nation. A heightened consciousness of a nation because we now have an early childhood technical working group where we recognize that Early childhood and nursery education isn't always just about literacy and numeracy. 
It's about the cognitive development. It's about the physical development. It's about the social development. So you now see these interministerial partnerships with health, social services, education, working together as collaborators in creating the best outcomes for our young children. Now that is something to celebrate. 40 years ago, on today's day, to be exact, the 13th of September 1976, the Ministry of Education through the government of Guyana officially launched the Guyana Nursery Education Program. Prior to this launch, these schools were privately owned and were referred to as bottom house kindergarten schools. At the commencement of this program by the Ministry of Education, there was an enrollment of approximately 19,000 children in 380 nursery schools. Today, on our 40th anniversary, we can proudly report an enrollment of approximately 26,500 children in 332 discrete schools and 142 nursery classes in Guyana, this being managed by approximately 1,700 nursery teachers. And of that 1,700 nursery teachers, I'm proud to say we have three males. <laughs> The nursery education program continues today to be a two-year program, although not compulsory as yet. Having this program being made compulsory is priority in our present education, sector, education strategic plan. Over the years, the Guyana nursery education program has been headed by eight assistant chief education officers. Permit me to go through the names and recognize these persons. The first Assistant Chief Education Officer for Nursery was Ms. Norma Bechu. This was, she was appointed in 1984 and served until 1990. Followed by Ms. Pamela Henry from 1990 to 1994. Ms. Genevieve Whitener from 1994 to 1999. Mr. Romeo McAdam from 1999 to 2000. Then Mr. McAdam was followed by Ms. Shirley Mentis King in 2001, and she served until 2003. Ms. Jacqueline Witt from 2004 until 2007. Ms. Dugmati Singh from 2007 to 2011. And yours truly, Ingrid Trotman, from 2011 to date. A chronicle of the Guyana Nursery Education Program can be obtained in the Nursery Education Handbook. And if I should go through this, maybe the 13th of September next year would find us here, still listening to all of these activities. And that Nursery Education Handbook was written in 2005. That was conceptualized by Mrs. Jennifer Whitenet, who was the then acting CEO. This book will be further updated as part of our nursery anniversary activities, and it would be made available to you before the end of this term. I will take a quick glance at some of the events that took place at the beginning of the 21st century. We would not go back as long as 1976. We're going to take it from the 21st century. In 2002, the Fourth Caribbean Early Childhood Conference was held in Guyana, and also the non-academic standards for nursery, nursery schools were established. The non-academic standards entails the grade of schools, the enrollment that meets the grade, the ratio, how many children supposed to be in a class or attached to one teacher, the number of washrooms, the number of saints, the, num the space per child, and so on. In 2003, the record of work was introduced, while the format for the general, the annual, and the termly schemes was uh, standardized. In 2005, the Nursery Education Handbook was produced and launched. 2006, the Early Childhood Literacy and Numeracy programs were launched and at the same time, the curriculum guides for years one and two and the national timetable for nursery education were all revised. 2013, the first draft 
of the locally produced Roraima Reader series was written and piloted in 10 schools in Georgetown and Region 4. This series comprised of workbooks for literacy and numeracy, diagnostic assessment for children before they commence year one and year two, picture word cards, flashcards, assessment booklets for literacy and numeracy, which are mainly done orally, and a manual to guide teachers in the use of these books. The final draft was made available to all nursery schools in 2015. These books will be on display along with other learning materials at our exhibition, which is slated for tomorrow at the Liana Nursery School. I'm extending an invitation. I'm also promoting that exhibition to you that will be held at the Liana Nursery School at 10 a.m. tomorrow. In 2014, the age entry at the commencement of the nursery program in 1976 was three years, nine months at the end of the year, which meant that a child had to be born on or before the 31st of March in the year of his or her third birthday to be eligible for admission to nursery school. Now in September of 2014, the age of admission was changed to three years, six months at the end of the year. Or the child had to be born on or before the 30th of June in the year of his or her third birthday in order to be eligible for admission in September of that year. In 2014, the Guyana Early Childhood Education Project which is being funded by Global Partnership for Education and the Government of Guyana, with the Ministry of Education being the executing agency and the World Bank being the budgetary entity, was launched and has been a tremendous success up to, to, to date. This project has four components. We have capacity building being the first, which is in progress, and our education strategic plan states that although children are and should be the main targets of educational efforts, rapidly changing economic circumstances and changes in technology require that the ministry commit to a policy of providing continued education and training opportunities for the adult population. The second component of this pro project is the provision of teaching learning materials. Over 400 learning kits were distributed in regions 1, 7, 8, and 9. The Education Strategic Plan has committed to emphasize emergent literacy and to provide in the materials. And the third component of the project is parental involvement. We will be launching the mass media aspect on Wednesday night at the Pegasus Hotel. Here we will highlight the need to read, play, love in a campaign which features a number of stakeholders in Guyana. And the fourth component, of course, monitoring and evaluation of the project. During 2014 to 2015, an additional number of nursery schools were built and commissioned in accordance with the CARICOM standards. And for example, we have schools such as Tushin Nursery, which is in Region 3, Diamond Nursery, Good Hope Nursery, and Better for Wacton Nursery in Region 4, Ithaca Nursery in Region 5, Number 77 Nursery in Region 6, and Turkine, Roxanne Burnham, and Cummins Park in Georgetown. Now these buildings are our, what I must say, they have led us to a place in the community of the Caricoms, the entire CARICOM countries, they are all looking towards Guyana as a model, as an example, and leading in the learning environment. 2016, data collected from our diagnostic assessments will play a major role as one of our indicators in our national, of our national budget. 2016 continues to be a very good year for us. Guyana has been selected to be featured in what we call the best practice guide for early childhood education in the Caribbean with emphasis on the learning environments. This was made possible because of our initiation of our model schools 
those schools that were mentioned above. And this best practice guide is being funded by the Caribbean Development Bank. 2016, we continue to standardize our termly skills and th these were distributed to all regions for, our, for guidance of our teachers. Another model nursery school will be built before the end of 2016 in Moko, Arcadia. Some of the plans include workshops based on gender socialization, which is a big issue. Having standardized outdoor, outdoor equipment installed in nursery schools in the playground where there isn't any. Ensuring smooth transition from home to nursery school as well as from nursery to primary school and more monitoring and supervision of schools and evaluation of programs and activities. At the nursery level, parental involvement is not a major issue simply because for some reason parents usually attend our PTA meetings. We have 90 to 95 percent attendance at most of our PTA meetings. However, we have more plans to reach out to the few defaulting parents. In conclusion, I would just like to remind you that education is not static. It is dynamic. So we would like to encourage you to support our programs and activities at the nursery level and to ensure that there is continuity at the higher level. There will be changes in the years ahead and we solicit, solicit your support. One Chinese proverb says that when the winds of change are blowing, some people are building shelters and others are building windmills. We at the Ministry of Education would like to encourage you to join with us in building windmills instead and embrace the changes for the holistic development of our young generation. Today I'm elated to be a part of the recognition of this significant milestone of 40 years in the delivery of nursery education in Guyana. Nursery education is critical to the developmental process of our children and it is for this reason we have a responsibility to intensify our efforts in the delivery or in its delivery in a creative innovative and child-friendly fashion and why I'm saying this I had an experience once where a young lady wanted to be employed in those days I was district education officer and uh, she came to be employed as a teacher and so as she was asked to produce her qualifications she said she had no major qualification but at least she can teach nursery children. And so fundamentally, there is this view that if you're going to operate at, nurse, at the nursery level, you don't have to have anything. And I think we've since rectified that. We've since changed that in terms of how we would have uh, gone about um, showing people what we do in nursery education and the critical nature of nursery education. This is the first major exercise in which children are separated from the comfort and the secure zone of their parents. Therefore, nursery schools, therefore nursery schools have the responsibility to intensify its efforts in terms of creating an atmosphere and an environment where our children can grow, where our children can develop and they can prosper. We must provide enough material to attract and to make the child feel comfortable and secure. So really and truly, it's not a joke when you operate at this level. This is the first place where the child builds his or her self-esteem. A child learns the importance of his own name, things, and friends. Every child learns to communicate with his teachers and fellow pupils in the nursery school. It is the right place for a child's foundation for lifelong progress. The skills and knowledge that the child develops have a great impact on the aptitude and attitude of the child later in life. 
Researches on nursery education have shown that children taught at an early age usually have improved social skills, fewer behavioral problems, and better grades without special attention. Self-confidence gained by learning in a playful manner adds to the personality development of the child. The child's positive learning attitude, the basic foundation in language, comprehension and management help the teacher facilitate the child's learning at primary and higher levels of education. So we are saying, uh, Madam Chair, that the nursery education facilitates the transition to primary education, so it must be serious. Moreover, moreover, childhood education specialists claim that young children learn best when they have an opportunity to interact with their peers and their parents and the instructors treat them kindly. The bloom, they bloom well in a tension-free environment. Besides, they comprehend and learn things better as if they are introduced to new things in small portions. Madam Chair, some salient features of nursery school include, and I'm saying this for those who believe that nursery education is just something that we do, by the way, uh, it includes a good head start of learning. It includes the teacher is in full, is, the teach, teaching is in fun-filled play method. It is done in a fun-filled play method, putting children on a path of lifelong learning. That's what it does. Higher development in language and mathematical skills. A great opportunity to develop social skills, as we heard our chairman alluding to. Exposure to, ex exposure to enhanced communication skills. Nursery schools also include some learning goals, and I would like to mention some of them. Cognitive development of the child as a learning... Cognitive development of the child as learning is due to practice and interaction in a big group. Social interaction is the most important feature here. Pupils learn to interact with children of their own age in a supervised environment. Playing with mud, yes, playing with mud, holding crayons, practicing free coloring and writing on, on the board, which helps in what? Motor skill development of the pupils. Both fine motor and gross motor development takes place by the various activities performed in the classroom under the supervision of teachers. Oral skills also, children learn to speak, learn to develop language. Oral activities like poem, recitation, storytelling, role playing, singing songs, and the like. All these activities help in improving their oratory skills. They learn to speak in groups. They also develop the confidence of speaking in front of small groups. Repeated recitations of poems and story enactments on stage. Of course, they learn toilet training also. Time management is another important feature of nursery school. Children learn assembly time, circle time, play time, story time, fun time. And a critical aspect that we must never overlook, it is the concept of phonological awareness. Because this is where our children actually learn to read as they develop these skills. Phonological awareness is the most important feature of nursery school education. Children learn to identify the songs of the alphabet. They learn to recognize the alphabet by listening to songs. Pre-writing skills is also developed. Pre-writing skills developed by the use of coloring with crayons, writing on, on blackboard with, with chalk in, free, in a freestyle manner. That's why we need our, our stakeholders to come on board because the nursery school should present certain features and uh, I am happy to see that some of these features are represented right here. The environment has to be hygienic, it has to be neat, it has to be clean and tidy. Trained soft speaking teachers in the nursery school you, do, you don't shout and holler and so Trained soft speaking teachers, colorful classrooms, plenty toys, yes plenty toys, block building games, a rest corner in the classroom, drawing black or green boards, sand pits, playground, Flashcards to identify letters, animals, vegetables, and colors. Close proximity to whom? Yes, close proximity to whom? You know, we should not want to be living in Roxanne Bourne Gardens and you want to go to town. You, you know, you don't want to put on juice trust on the children. Close proximity to whom? Good and safe transport facility. Good and clean toilets. Clean and filtered drinking water. Madam Chair, 
One of the most important cognitive shifts in the nursery school years that occurs between three to four year olds is the development of symbolic thought. Symbolic thought is the ability to mentally or symbolically represent concrete objects, actions, and events. The most obvious sign of the development of symbolic thought in two to three year old is the significant increase in the use of miniature form of things around them and take themselves into a world of imagination which becomes more elaborate as they grow. According to the National Institute for Early Childhood, children who attend a good nursery school have a better pre-reading, have better pre-reading, maths and science skills than those who do not. Madam Chair, it is clear from the observations made that we have lots of ground to cover to be effective in the delivery of nursery education, and we have been doing work. It is against this background I would like to extend a call to all stakeholders to let us collectively work, positive, collectively work to positively impact the lives of our little ones that in the future they will fulfill purpose. Let us pool our knowledge, our skills, and our resources to enhance their development. For together, we can do the extraordinary. Today, I count it a privilege, a joy, and an honor to celebrate 40 years of nursery education with this industrious and illustrious group of nursery educators. I say to you, keep on keeping on. Thank you, and God bless you all.